So we're not going to never mind your scriptures like a lot of y'all do to us. Okay, go ahead and bring out your final scriptures and go ahead. So therefore, we could break it down properly and then cut them and then get forth understanding. Give me Hosea chapter 1 verse 6. And she conceived again and bare a daughter. And the Most High said unto him, Call her name, Lorumaha. Read. For I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. Right. See that? See, them. there's many times in history where the Most High said, I'm no longer going to have mercy on Israel. I'm going to cast them away. But we just read in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, where the Most High said before they never had mercy, but now they have obtained it. See, the Most High could change his mind. All right? Because a lot of you try to pull out the scripture, the Most High changeth not. The Most High has exceptions to his rules. All right? There have been times when the Most High wanted to cast off the whole nation of Israel, and he didn't want to deal with them no more. But then the Most High just said in 1 Peter 2 and 9 that which in times past did not receive mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Because like Ezra 3 and 11 says, or 3 and 15 or 3 and 11, one of them, it says his mercy endureth forever towards Israel. The Most High will always have mercy on the nation of Israel. At that particular time being, he's upset and he's pissed. He casts us off from his sight. This was one of those particular times. This is what Peter was dealing with in the second chapter of his books to the ones that were scattered throughout Europe and Asia Minor. Read on. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah. What did the Lord say? I will have mercy on who? Upon the house of Judah. The Lord said, will have mercy upon the house of Judah. Drop down to verse 9, which verse. represents the southern kingdom at that time. Because Hosea was a prophet for the northern kingdom that was worshiping idols. Read on chapter 1, verse 9. Then said the Mosai, call his name Loami, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. See, that's the point. Mosa said that Israel would not be my people. Now, when you go back to Romans chapter 10, verse 19, it says, which are no people. That's the difference. There's a difference between no people and not a people. That was the whole point. So you can't use 1 Peter 2 and 9 for Romans 10 19. Romans chapter 10, verse 19 says, I will provoke them to jealousy, which are no people. And he and Paul quoted Moses when he said to the nation of Israel during that time. You understand? And he said he will provoke us to jealousy by them which are no people. But Peter was quoting Hosea when it said that Israel will not be what? Read it again. All right, verse um, uh, nine. nine. <laughs> then said God, call his name Loami, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. So that's not the same. That's not, and, and notice, Paul, when you really check it out, Paul did not quote this scripture. Paul did not quote Hosea. Paul quoted Deuteronomy. If it was talking about the same thing that Peter was talking about, then Paul would have said, thus saith, did not Hosea said. He said, no, did not Moses saith. Peter in 1 Peter 2 and 9 was quoting Hosea, the first chapter here. <laughs> and look, I got a precept Bible. Right. And if you look in, uh, in the middle of the precepts on Hosea 1 and 9, right. it links you up to 1 Peter 2 and 10. Exactly. So, like, so these up, men don't build right. the precepts, so therefore, that's why they're coming out with all these devil's doctrines, man. Right. That's why they don't see the scripture said precept upon precept, line upon line, and here a little, there a little. Because they don't deal with the priests, but they just go by what another man says without checking out for themselves. That's why they end up getting cut in the sweat because Sharpie channel. Because when we try to humble ourselves to deal with these brothers, but no, they want to come out and attack us right, right. and call us out of our name. Right. I'm bitch tits, you're horse face, you understand? Yeah. And and I'm big boy, and they want to make all these mockeries, but yet, where are your scriptures, man? Mm. We made a video on Job, and you still have not combated what we brought out. And, and I still have not found one man to deal with any of the scriptures we brought out in Job wow. from the reload that we did since we did that video back in last I September, B. Yeah. But yet somebody came on the channel about a week ago and said, this nigga's going off. But where are your scriptures yeah, approved we going off? Yeah. Why don't you deal with the scriptures that we brought out in the video? They never do that. They don't do that, man. So likewise here in Romans 11 chapter, Paul was even thinking about Hosea, man. Peter was thinking about Hosea, man. Paul was thinking about Moses. That's why he said, does say of Moses. So you can't use 1 Peter 2 and 9 for Romans chapter 10, verse 19. When the Mosai says that, what, Israel will not be my people, I will cast them off. But what Paul was saying in Romans 10, 19 was a quotation from Moses when he said, I will provoke them to jealousy by them which are no people. And he was talking to the nation of Israel, not about the nation of Israel. That's the difference. 
Read on. Drop down to chapter 2, verse 23. Uh, verse um, uh, 23. And I will sow her unto me in the earth. Read. And I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. So wait a minute. The Most High says that I'm going to have mercy upon her which had not obtained mercy. So wait a minute. I thought we just read in, in chapter 1, verse 10. Okay, with a, a, a verse, a verse ten, or uh, excuse me, um, chapter one, verse, verse six. When the Most High said, "You will not have no mercy right. on Israel," what happened? The Most High changed his mind. Because later on, throughout, um, um, throughout the chapters and books, the Most High reneged and gave Israel another chance. Because that's how much love he has for his people. He didn't give no Gentiles no other chances, man. Because he wasn't dealing with the Gentiles, man. That's why he said, you only have I known of all the families of earth. So how can God love everybody? For you that try to pour that John 3, 16, to my God love all nations. That don't make any sense. The Lord wasn't done with the other nations. The Lord was always pissed off when Israel did something wrong. When Israel did something wicked. He always gave mercy, mercy unto Israel. He didn't give no mercy to the other nations. You may have a couple isolated incidences here or there, but overall, the national, national aspect, mercy was always for and towards Israel and Israel only. That's the point. That's why in one sh chapter and verse, the Mosai tells Hosea, I'm going to cast off the whole seed of Israel. I'm mad at them, but the next one, I'm going to bring them back and have mercy on them. <laughs> See that? And the Most High never spoke that way towards any other nation on this earth. So how? So you really think that the Gentiles are worthy for the Most High to offer up His only begotten Son for, man? Who is crazy, man? <laughs> Don't you see the love connection between Israel and the Most High? We're the ones that was called His wife. He is our husband. I'm interested in the kingdom. We're not even going to be calling the Most High the Most High. We're going to be calling him a husband, man. Matter of fact, I think it says that this very same um, chapter. Yeah, give me um. Um, 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 chapter two, um, um, right, verse 16. Verse 16, and it shall be at that day, say the Lord, that thou shalt call me Aishi. Right, Aishi, which is Ayash, which means husband. We want to be calling the most high husband in the kingdom, man. Right? And shall call me no more Bahali. Right, which means Lord. Because Baal is another way of saying Lord. All right, we're not going to call him Lord anymore or Baal. We're not going to give him any type of title or resemblance of, an, of another false god. We're going to call him Ayash. We're not even going to call him Father. We're not going to call him Father. We're not going to call him Yahweh. We're not going to call him none of those names. In the kingdom, we'll be calling him Ayash, which is husband. That title, that's that, that was only given as a privilege for the nation of Israel to call him. The Lord did not privilege the other nations for this. So therefore, how the hell God so loved the nations that he won't sacrifice Christ over? Are you right. crazy, man? This is a love connection between the nation of Israel and the Most High. The hell with the other nations. They were created to be our servants. And they will serve the Most High through us as our slaves. Read on. For I will take away the names of Belim out of her mouth. And they shall no more be remembered by their name. Right. So, um, Hosea chapter 2, verse 23. All right. And I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them, which were not my people, thou art my people, and they shall say, thou art my God. Right. So, the whole point was my people. They weren't my people. Not a people, but my people. Go back to Romans chapter 10, verse 19 again. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses say. Right, notice Paul did not quote Hosea. He quoted Moses. Read. First Moses say, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people. See that? It didn't say it's not, it said not, he didn't say not a people or not my people, but not a, we'll read it again. All right. I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people. Right, told him that I will provoke you to jealousy by them which are no people. But he told Israel, thou art not my people. You wasn't a people. You understand? So that was a quotation from 1 Peter 2 and 9 with Hosea chapter 1 verse 9. Right. And chapter 2 verse 23. Dealing with the nation of Israel. Worshiping idols and sinning. Not talking about the nation of Israel being jealous over each other. 
Moses did not warn us of that. He told us that what's going to happen is, is that if you didn't keep the commandments, these other nations, I'm going to provoke you to jealousy over. That's the bottom line to it all. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 21. That's Let's right. get it now. That's right. Let's get it. Because when I when I when I pull out the scripture to show and prove where Paul quoted from, somebody actually gonna go and say this is talking about other Israelites. Other Israelite foreigners, right? They have to, in other words, to keep their doctrine right. to make themselves look like fools. Because they don't want to admit wrong concerning the men that taught them this. Because right. they worship these men. Yeah. Read Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 21. They have moved me to jealousy with so like they have moved me to jealousy with that which is not of God. Right. So since we worship things which were not gods like idols, read. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. Read. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. So the nation of Israel was worshiping idols and doing vain stuff, man. So the Most High said because he was doing this, see, we were still called Israel, yet we were doing Gentile stuff. See that? So it's not like as if he was doing good and now the Most High saying, well, now you guys are doing bad. Now you're nothing anymore. No. We was already doing bad at this time when the Most High said this, man. So that goes to show you that same spirit of Hosea chapter 1 and Hosea 2 and 1 Peter 2 as far as us being wicked and off was already demonstrated with the whole nation of Israel in Deuteronomy 32nd chapter. But yet the Most High still says, read on. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. See that? He still said that I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people, and I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. So you can't you can't you can't do Acts the thirteenth chapter. Because see, when you read Acts the thirteenth chapter, the Pharisees got emulate towards Paul. Now was Paul a foolish nation? Was Paul a foolish nation? Paul was an individual. These are in, these are individuals that are jealous over each other. You know, kind of like what you got going on in Israel today, because people want to listen to them, and 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 they got the crowd. So now you got men that want to take other men's spots. Okay, you yeah. got you got men that all of a sudden they want to find out where your camp is at, so they could end up teaching there right, because right. they want that crowd. Okay, they want to be on YouTube. They want to be on YouTube. They want to be seen by other men. They can't. They can't. They can't do nothing without a camera in their face. Right. You understand? So that's that type of rivalry that's being done amongst y'all, which is off. Disgusting. And it's disgusting. But that's not what was spoken about in Deuteronomy 32nd chapter. The jealousy was referring to the other nations. Because we were sacrificing unto idols and we was doing vanities. So therefore the Lord said he will us a jealousy by them which are no people. Now when we read Acts 13 chapter, I believe it was, it was basically the Pharisees getting jealous over the fact that the people wanted to hear about Christ rather than Moses. Right, Moses. So that had no, that had nothing to do with, 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 with what Paul was speaking about in Romans 10 chapter when he quoted Moses. And when you read Deuteronomy 32nd chapter, it wasn't talking about um, 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 people getting jealous over Moses because, because um, Christ was being taught. That doesn't make any sense, man. So because of that, the Lord said he will provoke us a jealousy by a foolish nation, which represents, according to your doctrine, other Israelites. <laughs> that doesn't make any damn sense, man. The other, the not a people was referring to actual Gentiles. Give me Romans 11 and 11. So I the, guess the Israelites in this knowledge are jealous of these wicked-ass niggas in the world, man. Right, or exactly. Vice versa. Yeah. Right. Like, why are we jealous of them? Right. That doesn't make any sense. Give me room. As a matter of fact, the only thing that you niggas are jealous of is the fact that a lot of these men out in the world, they got better access to the nigga woman. Mm. And you jealous of that deep down inside because you want to love the nigga woman. Mm. That's what that's all about too. Okay? That's why you have that worldly spirit on and wanting to do wickedness and evil. You got that worldly spirit of wanting to be in gangs or driving nice cars. Okay? You got that worldly spirit on you. Right. Okay? You want to sell drugs. You want to be like Jake. Okay, you want to be basketball trying. players. You want to get rich and die trying. You got one foot in the truth and one foot in the world. You want that's what you want to do because you want to love the nigga woman. Because like R. Kelly and Jay Z said when they made that song "Pussy," niggas do all these things not to better themselves or not to feel good about themselves or not to treat themselves. They do these things just to achieve pussy. That's the whole thing agenda of of, of niggas on this earth is to achieve pussy, man. And, 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 and that is so true amongst the bulk of our nation, the ones out in the world.